So, how do you turn this, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked, into this, but everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked? Let me show you. Now, as a lot of you probably know, the effect you're hearing is just reverb, a very simple and basic audio effect, but Resolve has some cool features you might not know about that let you use reverb in new ways like what you just heard. Because there are several different ways you can use effects in the Fairlight page of Resolve. I'm here in the Fairlight page, I have a new copy of this audio I've dragged over, and this is that clip clean. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Cool. And a lot of you, if you want to add reverb, you might select that clip, open up your effects library, and just drag on reverb, and then you have this display with a whole bunch of uh, different presets and settings to change. I have this one uh, modified version of their cathedral that's just this like big reverby effect. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Right now you can see this main output is about 50% dry and wet dry being just the source signal, wet being just what the effect creates. So if I were to drag this to dry, but everything changed. It'd be the normal effect. If I would just go 100% wet on this, it would be tons of that reverb, um, but you wouldn't hear any of the raw signal. So a lot of times I keep this around 50 and we are gonna change this later when I um, reveal the cooler, I think, method for this. But you'll notice when I drop this on this clip, it is applying over the entire clip. But everything changed when the Fire Nation you don't have tons of flexibility here when you apply an effect. I should preface, I'm not a giant Fairlight expert at all. I have a little bit of a back history in like live sound engineering and some of that definitely helps with um, some of the more advanced stuff like what I'm gonna go on to show you. But I'm sure there are some specific details um, I either don't know or might get wrong in this video, but I'm still gonna show you something very cool. If you want it over the entire course of a clip, awesome. You could always just like chop up this clip and drag it to a specific one, but that could get messy real quick. When we have an effect just on a clip as well, you also run into this issue uh, that the effect stops when the clip stops. Listen to this. You'll hear the reverb and it will just cut off. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Oh, you hear that? Attacked. Yeah, no good. So I'm going to get rid of that effect on the clip and a lot of you might know that you can also apply effects on a timeline basis. If I were to come in here onto Audio 2 where this clip is recorded, I could press this button to click. I could go to reverb, turn on reverb, um, apply that same effect. But again, this would also apply um, not even just to this clip, but to everything else on this timeline. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But again, now this is a static effect on the entire track. Now, I know here there are some things we could do to sort of limit this effect or apply some automation here, but really I want to get to the good stuff. There's tons that you can do with effects on an entire clip, but I want to show you what you can do with effects on buses. You might have seen some people talk about uh, busing or flex buses or all this stuff in Fusion. It's this giant system that's great for organization and especially like complex projects with lots of different audio sources and additional sound effects. But we're gonna do it to create that one really cool isolated reverb effect you heard earlier. So follow along. I'm gonna try to go slowly and walk through exactly what I'm doing. Um, because it is it is very cool and a really cool effect that I think a lot of you could use in your videos. Okay, check this out. I am going to come up to Fairlight Bus Format. Here we just have this bus one that is created by default. That is what all your different tracks go to and that is your main output. But we are going to add a new bus and I will just name this Effects. I will make that a stereo bus and I will click OK and then now in our a mixer view down here, we have that effects bus. And you'll see that by default, that is also going to bus one. So anything we do here will go to that main output as well. And on this effects bus, I'm going to come up to effects and add that reverb tool. I'll choose the preset I like and click A OK. Actually, I'm gonna go back in those settings and set that 100% to wet. So anything coming out of this will just be the reverb, none of that source audio. Now, I already have it enabled down here, but what you wanna do is come up to these three dots and make sure you have bus sends checked as well. You do that, and then now I can come to this audio two track, and in the bus sends, I can select the effects bus. I click that, 
it has this blue input and if you mouse over it, you will get uh, this little settings button. You can click that and you get this pop up and you can see I can make sure that is on. And if I pull up this send level, you will actually see that reflected in this sends bus UI over here, up or down, up or down. And this send level slider is actually what we are going to animate using automation. Automation is an exceptionally powerful process. On a super surface level, you can just tell Resolve um, to pay attention to any changes that you make live on the fly and you'll record those whether you're changing like effects or these sends or master faders or any of that and it will save any of that movement. So if you have lots of different tracks, you can like be changing those tracks through an entire video and it will record all of the changes uh, for when you're mixing audio. That's something you do a lot, but we are gonna use automation on this bus send. And to do that, uh, I'm gonna make sure this little button is checked. I've had it checked for now. And I am just gonna make sure I have sends selected here. Then we will click this button next to it to a toggle animation that will give us this option down here uh, in the mixer view as well. And when I click that on the uh, audio to track, because I have selected send here, it says, okay, on this track, I am just watching whenever I change anything on this send menu. I'm gonna bring this uh, back down to its lowest point now. And there's one other thing we're gonna do uh, just to uh, be able to visualize this. On our track viewer here, um, you'll see when I click that button on this mixer viewer over here that also turns red, but next to it, we have a drop down, And this is all the different things that you can automate. So we're gonna come down to send and we're gonna see that FX and I'm gonna bring this down to send level. That is that main slider we're dragging back and forth. And you can see, I already have some automation I have programmed on that first clip that I played at the beginning of the video. So I have all of this primed. So when I click play, it is going to be watching what happens to this slider. And you will see that reflected in the screen line. And I'm gonna do just like I did in the intro. I'm just gonna select this slider and when it gets to that final phrase, I'm gonna pull up this send level and that will then send this track to that bus with the reverb effect on it. That effects bus is always there, it's always working, but it's only going to be receiving data that then gets processed through that reverb uh, when this send level comes up. Watch. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And I even brought it down a little bit at the end there. We didn't need to do that. And if you come up here to uh, touch and send this to uh, latch, um, because we've already done this, you, it gives you the option um, to like re-record any But of that. everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. If I just ramp that up and leave that there, then it will get rewritten to that. So now we have this effect you heard at the beginning. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And it just has that natural decay. It's not tied to the clip at all. That bus is processing that. And you can see when uh, track two dies off, that effects bus will keep going. Fire Nation attacked. It's pretty cool. And you can come in, change that reverb anytime. And you also have a main fader for this effects bus. So if I bring this all the way down, you're not gonna hear that reverb at all. Nation attacked. That's right. Or you can bring it back up and maybe be real loud. When the Fire Nation attacked. And because this is a completely separate bus, you can have multiple tracks feeding into that. I can come to this first track, uh, send a bus at FX channel as well, toggle that, and then. Let's -a go. All of a sudden, off two different tracks, we're sending to the same effects bus, so you can pull audio from multiple different tracks if you want the same effect at different points through your video. Let's -a go. One small other feature that's very cool, um, you can see here I pulled up that viewer as well um, because I wanted to shift this in time so that animation kicks in right when he says that last go. So I can just drag this over and you see when the line comes up. Let's -a go. Cool. But a few versions ago, we also got this button, which is automation follows edit. If I click that now and I drag this clip around, you see, hey, that line sticks with it. Really useful small feature. If you set up some of this automation, but then realize you have to move your clip around, you don't need to redo any of that. You just click this button and the automation follows the edit. It's super cool. I heard this in a uh, recent video I watched and it was super cool. And I know that um, a lot of you will probably find it useful as well. And I think this is a great example for how to dip your toe in that, as well as automation as well in general, which is so, so powerful. Again, this is just using reverb. You can do this with any number of effects it can get pretty wild. I know we covered some stuff a little fast. If you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the comments. And having effects just on a separate track like this can keep your clips clean. It can keep your tracks clean. It's cool. Thanks. I'll see you next time.